Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. As you know, Good evening, welcome to our Tuesday night uh, advanced class. This is January 2009, last uh, Tuesday of the month. So I'll be showing you guys more examples of the topic for this month, which is pawn power in chess. As usual, I've selected a few high-level games for you guys. Of course, in every game of chess you play, pawns play an important role because, as we mentioned in previous weeks, pawns are the ones who that decide the topography of the board and pieces move around the pawns. But the highlight of these games that I've selected for you guys, the pawns have more major roles than usual. And it's good that when you're trying to emphasize a point, so, so show some model games which relate to the topic. So I've selected four games, and we're going to go through as many as we can tonight in this two-hour session. Uh, four examples uh, of these games, Anand Kasparov, uh, Judith Polgar, Baku, French player, uh, Daniev against Petrosian, and Edward Gufeld against Kavalik. First game, Anand Kasparov. This is a World Championship game match. It was played in 1995 on January 10th in New York, as you know. The first half of the match was in New York, second half moved to London to get 12 games in New York, 12 in London. In this game, Anand is white. Gary Kasparov, at the time, is the world champion, is black. Would you like to know the result of the game beforehand? No. No. <laughs> okay, good. What I want to emphasize, to pay attention, especially in this game, is to, to pay attention to the role of pawns in this game. The game lasted 35 moves, and over 40% of the winner's moves were pawns. Wow. So, of course, I'm not necessarily recommending that you make high percentage of your pawn moves in a game. It really depends on the position of an opponent and the situation, so it varies. But in general, so Anand is white, and he opened with e4. As you know, Kasparov, if he were white, he would have opened with e4. Both of these guys play e4 almost invariably, except in the latest World Championship match that Anand kept playing D4 as white and surprised Kramnik and he finally won the match. Kasparov, his usual Sicilian response, made of three, D6, D4. Both of these guys play open Sicilian, which is D4. Knight takes D4, Knight of six, Knight C3, A6. Okay. This is the starting position of Najdorf or Shevenigan, and this position has been repeated millions of times. There are many different continuations that both sides can pursue. Uh, there is a uh, Sozin variation, bishop c4, followed by bishop c3, which Fischer popularized quite a bit in the 60s and 70s. There is a bishop e2, quiet line that Karpov played against Kasparov, and Kasparov, in, uh, in those games, he kept playing e5 and got, got the best of Karpov, and he had a plus score actually as black against him. So Anand must have prepared this line, because when he plays bishop e2, he wants Kasparov to repeat all those games that he played so many against Karpov with e5 continuation. That's where the psych role of psychology comes in. Kasparov decides to play e6 variation. So maybe the first home preparation is out. Kasparov is opting for possibly Shevenigan or Nijdorf, which is too early to name yet. White castles and black played bishop e7. White played a4. As we talk about metagame and factors in the metagame and the stages of the metagame, <coughs> The first stage of the metagame is called restraint. This is a perfect example of restraining move. It prevents black from playing b5. At some point, advances and try to create weaknesses on b6 squared. So that's it.